I'm Matt Pichard with REIT.com here in La Quinta, California for REITWISE 2013, near its Law, Accounting, and Finance Conference. Joining me today is Brad Malotsky, Executive Vice President and General Counsel with Brandywine Realty Trust. Brad, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Now, Brandywine was, was recently recognized as a 2013 Energy Star Partner of the Year. Could you talk about the evolution of sustainability initiatives at your company? Kind of started back in 09, Matt. Um, we had a couple of construction folks starting to look at what could we do on the sustainable tenant improvement front, paint, carpet, ceiling tile. Could we invest and or on the two million square feet that turns every year in our portfolio? How could we do that better, cheaper, and or no cost and do it better for the environment? That evolved into a platform that we started to look at our operations, our energy management, our procurement, our um, kind of incentives regulatory side of the fence. Um, and it became kind of a full package of offerings. And the focus was, again, can we do things for free that are better for our tenants, better for the environment, better for our kids, better for our vendors? So if we can do it for free, why not? And if we could do it and make an investment and have an appropriate return of one, two, three years on a payback and or charge our tenants, then those were the things that we were going to start to pay attention to and focus on. And that became kind of the bedrock of the platform. And in what ways are you able to measure the success of your sustainability efforts? This is a good question. Uh, the measurement's tough. So you got to kind of within a building itself, kind of three, five, 30 stories, and then kind of across the portfolio geographically, then across the company. And so we've looked at a variety of tools in order to help us. In certain circumstances like trash, we have all of our vendors reporting directly to us, not through our property manager, so it reports directly to corporate. On other things, we've got kind of enterprise software that will measure dynamic payback across the portfolio. So goofy things like light bulb investments, you sort of say, well, how many light bulbs have you put into the building? Well, we got 30 million square feet of space, a lot of light bulbs. So how do you track that? Is it an individual property geographically? And so we've got two different tools that help us there. Uh, the Steve Ashkin Sustainability Dashboard helps us measure procurement, kind of supply, cleaning supplies, paper that go into the properties. And then we've got a separate deployment that we're deploying down in Northern Virginia in the next couple of weeks, frankly. Global Carbon Systems, big company over in Australia and Europe. And they're an enterprise, kind of across different sectors, data aggregation type stuff. So it will allow us to, on a per square foot basis, measure cost over a given set of time periods and a given set of properties and allows for like dynamic payback period stuff. So good. And if you were going to highlight one current project or initiative that kind of best encapsulates what you're doing at Brandywine in this area, what, which, what would you pick? Um, I'll cheat and go with two. Kind of LED lights would be one. So a variety of different property managers are looking at and have actually deployed LED lights in parking lots or common areas, elevators, lobbies kind of area. Um, and we've had great success. So you're talking about lower wattage, lower cost, um, immediate savings, almost like a less than a half a year payback. And the equipment will last for quite much longer than original light bulbs, so incandescents or CFLs. And so we're not even that year and a half payback becomes a half a year, and we're not even taking into account the deployment cost of our maintenance folks, which again, you're talking about, there's a lot of light bulbs in the portfolio of our size and some others. And so the ability to redeploy them into higher functioning needs is a big savings. So LEDs would be one, metering would be another one. So we've bought, built, inherited, bought companies, and so we've got all kinds of different metering deployments in the portfolio. Some where they're excellent, we've got a building meter and then meters every floor. In our name, we get great data and we act on it. Others, we've got one meter for four buildings and you're kind of guessing at who's really the bad consumer in the building. So how can we get back into those buildings, deploy a metering strategy so that we can help tenants understand, because in our food group, the tenants pay, so help them understand what it is that they're consuming and if they're interested in saving, help give them tools to save on consumption. And the last question, what do you think is going to be the next evolution or phase in regard to sustainability? I think probably the convergence of uh, a couple things. One, technology, intelligent technology in buildings with the ability to use that information real time, so kind of 15 minute, 15 minute data interval stuff, and get that information to the tenants so that they can act on it. So you and I go home at night, we're not bad guys for the most part, even though we have, we're challenged foggily, and we leave stuff on. And that happens in every office, in every office building, in every hotel across the country. So how do you provide tenants with easy to deploy tools that when they're sitting at home watching TV, they can turn stuff off or down and measure it? So that's a real thing that's off the shelf, but you just gotta have the education, the fortitude to kind of fight through why people aren't interested or don't care or don't know that they're paying. 
So I think the convergence of technology in the buildings to be more intelligent, as well as you've got kind of codes and mandates hitting at the same time. What do I mean? So eight different cities in the country and two states now require Energy Star disclosure type um, information once a year. And so when you look at New York and Philly and DC and Austin and San Francisco and Seattle, and now Minneapolis and Boston's just going to approve one, Chicago's thinking about it, and 20 other cities. So in those places, required energy disclosure will level the playing field for people who are doing things and paying attention and people who are not. Brad, thank you so much for joining. Pleasure. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com. <laughs>